I think I'm going to get it, even though I convinced her that she probably shouldn't. So I promise that wasn't because I was being mean and selfish. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad. I'm in Denver, Colorado, and look who's behind me. It's Yvonne. I am so excited to see Yvonne, in fact. Say hello. Hi, you guys. I'm so excited. George finally made it, and we're going to go into the brass armadillo. I'm going to watch how he operates and um, hopefully find some things for myself, too. Well, and Yvonne is very good at what she does. She has been in the swap meet world for a long time, so she really knows resale, but she has recently gotten into vintage and especially vintage glass, and she's turned us all on to fire and light. She's found a great Sabino piece recently, so. I expect to uh, learn some things here myself. I think we're going to have a great time. All right, so we're hunting down the first style here. This place is huge. The showcases are all over there, and then there's spaces galore here. And I thought this was cool. It's an old Hershey's five cent milk chocolate candy bar dispenser for the little ones that now we get a whole bag of them for a dollar. Things have gotten cheaper. But uh, this particular one is from somewhere about 1930. You can tell by the deco design. And they want seven fifty for it, but you know, again, these old advertising pieces, you got to figure you're going to step up. I want to check a couple of things out in here. This Donald Duck is older, maybe from the 30s and 40s. Probably American Bisque made that. We'll see when we get it out. And it's priced at 25 If they do some sort of a little dealer discount, that might be cheap enough to take to Florida and sell. And then I'm curious, the Siamese Cat TV lamp what the price on that is, because I love those things. This is a good little table here. You'll notice that it's adjustable. It's got a little chain there. This is a new version. It's Eileen Gray. There are older versions. They all seem to sell for about $250. Well, I don't know what it is, but I seem to be on a purple and lavender kick. Everything I'm buying seems to have pink and purple shades, but I guess that's kind of in fashion now, so that's good. This pair of silhouettes with a very lengthy story, copyright 1942, our originals, and they're ten dollars for the pair. I think they're worth about twelve to fifteen each. This is Blanco. It's got the square. It's only ten dollars, and for that price, you know, it's a good color. And then the little duck. So the theme today seems to be purple. So here we got it down and it says Margaret Kane, K-A-N-E, rather than Keen. And it sure has that look of the Keen eyes. I mean, somebody would probably like it anyway, but we were hoping it was a Margaret Keen, of course. Okay, this space has a bunch of the Ertl in the box. And these are the ones that were made in the USA. That's what the collectors are after. And they're priced up there because they're mint. They're 50 to 60. So this is a bunch of Coors, but Coors means a lot of different things. Obviously, we think of Coors beer. But the people involved with Coors beer also 
started a pottery factory at a certain point. In fact, Coors was, they made a lot of stuff that was used in labs and things, but they also did stuff in the 30s and 40s. The dinnerware pattern, Rosebud, is on the back here. And that's a very collectible pattern with great deep color. And then these very deco looking pieces are little vases with the molded handles. And there's the Coors Colorado Pottery Mark. The vases are priced at about 35 each, which is about what they sell for. They also made a few things that you would get if you went to the brewery, like these mugs. This is Royal Albert's American Beauty pattern. And of course, the American Beauty Rose is known all over the world. It's a particularly popular pattern in the United States. So you will see more of this Royal Albert pattern around than most other patterns in the United States. China. And it is good quality. It was discontinued in 1990 after a 50-year run. And so if you want to add to your set, antique stores are the place to find it. So these are Royal Dalton porcelain figures, and they're all hand-painted. They were well-made. A lot of them are Dickens characters. These used to sell for $25 and $30 a piece. They sell for about $12 to $15 now, so I'm going to look and see if there are any that seem like they might be worth buying. There's a whole bunch of characters I don't know, but the first one was Uriah Heep. I remember the band. Okay, now see, there's Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist is probably worth getting because people are familiar with Oliver Twist. That's Pickwick. Tiny Tim. Yep, I think we'll stick to the better known Dickens characters here. That's the Artful Dodger. And again, all of these are well known in England and by people who are better read. Little Nell. So I'm going to take a look and pick out a few of these just because the price is right. Okay, well Yvonne has come across something that might be fire and light. She's not sure because of the way the top's finished and I have to defer to her because this is her area of expertise and I don't know it yet. So we're going to see what she comes up with. Meanwhile, while she's buying something nice and small that's easy to handle, I am looking at this garden gate. One of the things I like about Denver is that the weather is so dry that everything is just preserved forever. So this is vintage. You can tell it's had some use because it's got oxidation at the bottom, but it's in perfect condition. It's $48. These are selling for about double that to people for decoration and also to use in other repurposing ways. So we'll see if they give a discount, but I think I'm interested. I wanted to show some of these because I've had a few of these, and they are some of the more popular Alaskan collectibles. The masks on the right are made of caribou hide and fur. And then there's whalebone. Fossilized whalebone is often used for carving masks now, and it has this sort of a look and texture to it. You see prices in the two to three hundred dollar range on these. I have to say honestly, I think that that's top of the market. I'm from Seattle where these things are a little more common and they go for a little less there. They're in demand, but they're also more available. Here is this huge row of cabinets. Yvonne is in front of me and we're going to go looking for more good stuff. I love smiley face. Everybody needs a smiley face in their life. Well, smiley faces always make me think of Yvonne. I just brought her a smiley face clock that she got from me. So, see? Smiley face. And two McCoys, and then I think the planner is a Hager. Looks like it's metal for some reason. Yeah, they've kind of painted the inside in some different way. That's fine. This stuff Okay, this is really cool. If you opened it up, it would show the inside of the battery because this is a salesman sample from the 1950s. So it actually hinges open and then you can see the innards to see how the battery works and the cells and everything. It's priced at $90. I don't think there's a lot of room for me in that, but it is neat to look at.
This case is interesting to me because it has a lot of watches and I'm going to show a bunch of pocket watches. Now pocket watches are something that almost every family had because everybody had to have one of these at one time. So they're not necessarily uncommon, but the different movements, the mechanical parts in them can really affect the value. The number of jewels they have, they would use actually rubies to be part of the works and so the more rubies the better. These are key wind meaning that you actually had a little key, you can see the little keys attached to them, that you'd have to open the back to wind it rather than winding it from the stem and then you see some later stem winders when they figured out how to do that so that you didn't have to have a key that you could lose. We see watches from all over the place and different makers Illinois was one of the makers. South Bend, which was in Indiana, they were actually acquired by the Studebaker Car Company at one point. Hampton, Rockford, Elgin National here. And then we've got American Waltham, Howard. There's just a bunch of different ones. Then you've got Sidewinders. These were sidewinders because they would hang from a fob and that way you could pick them up and look at them from the side. So it made sense for that all to be offset. You'll hear the term railroad watches. There was a terrible accident in the 1870s where some switchman's watch stopped and then started again and he threw the switch at a wrong time and caused a major accident. So then railroad watches had to be guaranteed to work in all positions without stopping upside down on their face, on their back. And if they could do that, then they were railroad rated. Movements became a lot better, and we see some really good ones here. This is a Bun Special. That's a 23 Jewel movement. And they have that priced at around uh, 1800 It probably has a solid gold case. That can add a lot to the value. You'll see solid silver cases, as well as gold filled and plated and nickel. So. Uh, if it isn't marked in a way that tells you whether it's gold or silver, it's worth having tested because that can be a lot of the value. Values on these have come down recently. There's more interest in wristwatches these days, it seems. So it's a good time to start collecting if you like pocket watches, which I have to say I do. I have my great uncle's and it was restored when I was six years old and I've kept it ever since. Yeah, Van Briggle made the shades especially for the lamps. You see the butterflies in all the shades? And they've got milkweed, and they're just really cool. And all of the lamps that they are on are Van Briggle, and that's how they came from the factory. So if you see the shade by itself, and it's in good shape, you should pick it up. Yvonne noticed this and said, you haven't talked about one of these, and she's right, so let's talk about this. This is a dry cell. This one says 1910, and it says general ignition. This was actually, believe it or not, this was the battery that would have been in your old wall phone. Those old oak wall phones and the ringers used these big ones with a magneto, and that's how they were able to have their own power rather than for the power to have to come in from outside, which was important because they wanted people who lived in places out in the rural areas to be able to have telephones. So that was a big accomplishment. They're asking 35 for that. I think that is about what they go for now. Okay, these are not cheap enough for me to buy, but if you see old guns that look like this, these Buck Rogers inspired phasers from the 1930s and 40s especially, in fact the copper tone one is a Buck Rogers, disintegrator and they have it priced at 350. I don't know whether they go that high anymore, but they certainly did at one time. I've never been able to afford one because they're so cool looking. I think people just know. They also have a lot of neat candy containers and a lot of theirs have the original candy in it, which I do not recommend that you eat. But they've got the Santa Claus back there. In fact, two of them. They've got the Thanksgiving turkey. That's timely. School, well, that's actually an old woody station wagon. They've got these neat ones with the metal, with the pilot, and without. The Tunerville Trolley, and 
the Tuneville Trolley was a famous cartoon about 1915 to 20 about the people who lived along a trolley line and used it and all the people in their neighborhood. It was actually pretty cute. I read it once. A no parking sign, cars and tanks from the Second World War era, this old clock. So this is why people like collecting candy containers because if you're into glass, there's all sorts of neat designs and they went for about a 30 year period where they were really popular. You see a baseball in the back and then Spark Plug is another cartoon character. And these are priced all over the board. I mean, you can find them as cheap as 10 and $15 and then you can find some that run in the hundreds. A couple fun things in here on the right. That little dog is a German decanter, probably by Ramsey's company from the late 1930s, right after Prohibition. Those were very popular. He's priced at 38. I think that's a little bit on the cheap side. I don't know that it's cheap enough for a reseller, but I'm going to find out. And then on the left, that character is either Heckle or Jekyll from that cartoon in the 1950s. They've got him priced higher than the dog. Personally, I like the dog better. Well, here's something that solves a little mystery I had, which is, why are these early 60s Walt Disney character mugs from Japan so lightweight and kind of cheaply made? Well, now I know why. Because they were given out as premiums by your RCA Victor TV dealer, and I had no idea that that was the reason they would have had to make them inexpensive because they were free premiums so they wouldn't have wanted to spend a lot of money on them. That's why they're now worth about 20 bucks a piece because they're hard to find in good condition. So here's how we get help. The magic button is pressed and Yvonne has found, and it's a good deal, this Hager cat. And what's nice is it actually says Hager on it still. It's got the label because there were knockoffs of these made. This was originally based on a 1930s design and it became popular again in the 80s. And $25 is a good price. They should sell for probably close to double that. Okay, since we have about eight feet of length, I'm gonna take my mask off just to say hi to everybody. I like this sign. If it was my van, well, it's never empty enough for them to vacuum anything so they'd get off easy. It's priced at $2.80, I think, and that's because old signs are very popular right now. Uh, while I'm at it, I just wanted to remind you to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the join button if you're interested in memberships, and I'll see you again every Monday and Wednesday here on YouTube. So now back to the show. Well, here we go. Here are Coors Safe Driver Awards for one year up through, it looks like, 16 years. Wow. Must not have been sampling the product on the job. That's good. Well, it's time to hit that button again. Thank you. Someone will be with you shortly. Because there's a bunch of jewelry in here, including butterfly wing, and I like butterfly wing, so I'm going to take a look at that. So I'm not getting the earrings because they're screwbacks and women think those are painful and they're right. Background in these, it is not blue paint, it's not foil. Those are actual butterfly wings and they made them into jewelry. It was very popular in the 30s and 40s and 50s as souvenirs, especially from exotic places. And you see a lot of it in Florida. That's where my next show is, so I bought it with the intent to take it there. If you ever go to Costa Rica and you go to the insect museums and they have the room full of the blue butterflies that fly around and live for about 10 days and basically drink nectar and, and try again. must be a great life for them <laughs> what you're looking at this piece right yeah there? yeah i just thought that was really pretty mm. was that jade this is actually a pretty interesting space they have little domed skeletons and lab devices old syringes this is actually a bloodletting device from the 19th century. That was back when they felt that bloodletting would cure various mental disorders and they would use these in asylums. It's pretty gruesome. People just didn't know better and they tried a lot of things before we got to the modern medicine we have now. Well, here's something rather gruesome. 
These are stereo cards that were used for training doctors. This is a woman who, in 1910 apparently, hopefully this was just makeup to illustrate, but that would be a very bad case of syphilis breaking out in the face back when that was not curable. And here's syphilis ulcers on a man. It was a very scary time back then. We obviously are living in a time of scary disease as well, but at least it's one and not a whole host of things that we don't understand. Now they are really fond of these, so I can't buy any of them. They have them priced from 35 up, but they've got some really great wallfish and mermaids. And the mermaids are not easy to find these days. Everybody loves them. And look at this entire family of them. Now they want 300 for the grouping of them, but there are eight, seven of them. So when you divide it out and figure what mermaids sell for, you know, they're not insane at that price. It's just, you'd have to love them. And I do, but not enough to buy them. <laughs> what just sure happened? Oh, Yvonne is actually paying attention. They are having a half off moving sale. So now we're going to have to look at these things again and see <laughs> if any of them are suddenly a better deal. Well, here's some of the toys I didn't have as kids that look like a lot of fun. So let's take a look together. That's a Humphrey Mobile. This is a US Navy pom-pom gun. Now, I grew up a Navy brat. I'm surprised I never saw one of these around, but I didn't know anyone who had one. Operation Airlift with the exclusive Futurematic motor, and that was where the airplanes would fly around on a stand. Those were fun. You can see it right here, out of the box. That's priced at 300. Again, you know, it's hard to find these old toys in good shape with boxes. This is a motion lamp, and this is Walt Disney. It's priced at $135. That is really not a bad price because it's Disney. It's an unusual one. They were made for kids, so they weren't taken care of as well. And then this is Ideal's rocket launching truck, and this is new in the box as well. So they've got some cool stuff we don't see very often in 1950s and 60s era toys here. Well, Yvonne's going to check into this. This is Argonaut pattern. And neither she nor I have seen it with this pearlescent finish before. I hope that's coming through on the camera for you. It's priced at 20 and Argonaut's a pretty good pattern. So we're going to see what happens. And if it looks like a deal, then we'll have someone take it out of the case. These are mainly older Bell telephone paperweights. Southwestern Bell, local and long distance telephone. In the back, you've got Western Electric Company. These were popular to give out in the 1920s and 30s. And then a lot of the collector clubs started reissuing them in the 1980s, but they're not gonna have this sort of disturbed, see how the paint is just a little bit oxidized. It almost looks like there's some cracking or crazing and the letters aren't perfect. Well, that's what an original is going to look like because an original is 80 or 90 years old now. When Mark's Toys had to quit making metal toys with tabs, they were trying desperately to stay alive by doing rubber items and injected molded plastics. They did a bunch for Disney, but they also did these nutty mods. And they are crazy looking sort of gargoyle-ish people who are doing all sorts of things. These are sportsmen cop holding up the robber with the loot and then this one where it's like he's a giant stomping through a city and there's a car under his hand they're very odd you don't see them often i don't think they were big sellers they were based on that sort of crazy rat fink inspired big daddy roth inspired design of that time but they're pretty collectible now at about 45 a piece in the early 60s, it was popular to give these to your teenage daughter so she wouldn't talk on the phone very long. And it was a sand timer. And this one's in Lucite with the telephone saying hello and goodbye. And when your time ran out, it was time to say bye. This one's only $6 and I have people who think these are fun and I'm going to go ahead and get it. Yvonne and I were looking at this and here is a good example of a situation where Two dealers can look at the same thing and it really depends on where you take it. 
she picked this up and we know people love mushrooms. This is Murano. It's from about 1970. It's priced at $15. For $15, a reseller online isn't really going to make money on this because it's heavy enough to ship that you're just going to give most of your profit to the post office. But I can sell this in person and I'll come out okay on it. So I think I'm going to get it even though I convinced her that she probably shouldn't. So I promise that wasn't because I was being mean and selfish. It's just because I'm selling it in a different way. As old phones go, this one's just a little more interesting because it's from an old motel and it's got the dial that shows how you can get the front desk, the lounge, the restaurant. And so that makes it a little bit different. It's $24.50, not a terrible price. It has some cracks or else I would take it. One thing you'll see in malls like this now are people selling off collections of similar items. All of these pieces are Royal Copley and related companies from the 1950s. They quit producing in 1957. So you're going to see a lot of 1950s coloration on these. Probably their biggest classic, of course, are these roosters. Roosters and hens. But they made a lot of different stuff, and the prices on these are anywhere from about uh, 10 to $25 each, depending on the style. Well, I can tell that I'm getting closer to the West when I start seeing these mosaic tile tables. This is one that somebody just did freehand on their own. You can tell because it's a little more randomly chipped through. It's a neat design. This one's priced at $165. They seem like they sell in that range if they're good. I've had them with totem poles. I've had them with Navajo-inspired geometric designs. They've got those great hairpin legs, and they're just fun, like the colors. So I just wanted to show this off because I thought it was neat. It's coralline glass. It's where they would take these little ground-up pieces of glass and then apply them and so it's got a rough texture like coral, hence the name coralline. And then the rest is hand enameled, but when you open it up it's actually a little cordial set. And that's what I think is neat about it is that it's this hidden thing and something you were not necessarily expecting. These were done in Europe in the 19 teens right before Prohibition and this one's priced at 79 I usually see them priced between about 75 and 100 and a quarter. So there's the Lutz lamp. It's got a nice brass base with some design. This would be somewhere right around early electrification, so maybe 1890s. It's been rewired, which is appropriate. It's got some nice stamping on the brass as well. This is a very unusual piece. You don't really see lampshades made of bohemian art glass and that's why they have it priced at about a thousand. Okay, now I'm telling you, Yvonne is pretty savvy. Look at this cool thing she's got. What a great shape. And it's got a mark on the bottom. Lung. And that is for, she showed me, Carolyn Lung. And modernist is her thing. And look at the prices they're going for. So the fact that this one was $20, she just got herself one of the best buys in the place. Now, I know Victorian has been out of style with a lot of collectors because it doesn't fit a lot of modern houses, but now that people are building McMansions, we're seeing more interest in Victorian again because you can actually put things in architecturally that make this sort of a look really pop again. Additionally, there are still places where people are restoring old homes. And it just has such a loveliness and gracefulness to it. Look at this beautiful settee. It's priced at $7.95. That really is the maximum that they seem to sell for nowadays. But if you think what a love seat would cost you, and this one actually would be comfortable enough because it's got padding on the back. It's not a big carved wood piece projecting into your back. This is the sort of thing I think of when I think of old Denver homes, so it's nice to see this here. Oh, that's very pretty, though. Yeah, these Victorian tie-dyes do well. That is really beautiful. And how much is that one? That doesn't seem bad for what it is. And then around it, they have this set of dishes. And this is a great chance to show you a 
extensive variety of what they had in this line. This is Metlox pottery and this is the Lotus pattern. This was done in the late 70s and early 80s. So there's a lot of jewel tone colors. This happens to be the cranberry, but they made it in about eight or ten different colors. Some collectors prefer to mix and match. It's really neat because it's naturalistic. It's also very specific in terms of the way it stacks. So when you stack the plates, they go one direction, which is pretty easy to follow. Like you can see here, the ruffles are not the same all the way around. They've got good prices on these. The butter dish is under $20. The casserole dish is only 26. For people pattern matching, these prices are really very reasonable. Only $2.50 for the uh, little dessert plates. I have to say there's probably money in this for someone who does pattern matching, so I suspect someone will come along and scarf this entire set up. I always wanted a pair of these. For 200 bucks, you could have a pair. Any of these old instruments that you have hanging out, you know, guys were in clubs and fraternal organizations and women played in bands and all of this old musical instrument stuff is of value. So if you're dealing with a family estate, don't just figure that because no one's played it in the last 30 years that no one wants it. Because someone does, unless it's an upright piano, then, well, those are too big and heavy to move. But drums, oh yeah, we can sell these all day long. It's nice to see one of these up and operating so you can see what they actually are supposed to do. This is an oil drip lamp. This is the smaller size with the goddess in the middle, which is the one you see the most often. They're called rain lamps, but that's actually mineral oil. That's what makes the rain. You have to make sure they use the right oil or they can clog the motors and it also can attract a lot of dust. So sometimes when you find these in the wild, they need a lot of cleaning and help. This one's priced at $198. They are selling for as much as that now. So it's worth taking the time if you find one. Well, if you think you wouldn't pay a couple hundred dollars for an eight track player, this is the one that might make you make an exception. This is the Weltron. And these are very collectible. They were way ahead of their time because of the design. This one says it plays very well. It's price two and a quarter. The important thing is, is the case in good shape? And does everything work? And I mean everything. Every button needs to work. The eight track player needs to work. These came as television sets and I believe also cassette players. And they're just a really neat look. Very modern. This is a neat Danish modern piece because it's a coffee table that opens up and turns into a larger bar surface with the surfaces that you can put that are drink proof and it rolls so very handy piece they have it priced at 350 you know Danish modern is popular now well as much as I'm enjoying myself unfortunately I have to move on because I have a long trip across country and I've got to complete but I have had such a good time with Yvonne today and She's really fun. If you haven't seen Yvonne Thrifty Rich, I suggest you go to her channel because she knows a whole lot about a whole lot of reselling and resale beyond vintage as well as vintage. And so you will really, especially if you're a reseller yourself, you will get a good education. And she's also just really cool. She's everything I hoped she would be in person. And I can't wait to come back and see her again, hopefully next month on my way east. So in the meantime, it's been great being with you. This is George the Antique Nomad on Periscope, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I look forward to showing you more fun things from this trip and future adventures. See you soon. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!